Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about ECUs and we're going to talk about where my dollar bucks went and why I've had a variety of ECUs and I do have a variety of ECUs across my cars. Uh, I'm not particularly brand loyal at this stage to a particular manufacturer. I think some are better than others in what they do, but there is certainly a, a case where some suit particular applications and, and others don't. Um, you know, I run quite cost effective ECUs in my, in my MX-5s that I race and, and I'm going to be spending towards the higher end of what you can get uh, on the Ultima. Uh, to start with, thanks to everyone who commented and shared uh, their projects in the comments. Uh, there are some pretty cool cars getting built. As I mentioned, I'm going to continue to use any YouTube earnings and send tools out to people in the hope that that will help them complete their cars. I'm not doing this for any money, so keep sharing uh, your cars in the comments and I'll do this as, as often as money permits. At this stage, I'm not expecting I'm gonna be making millions, so but I'll do it, I'll do it as much as I can. Um, so this week I'm sending this King Chrome Rib Nut Kit to a person named Luke Hurst who is doing a supercharged R1 Mini. Pretty cool project in my mind. Uh, the actual winner was a person named Tweakback who is building a BMW 120D with a six-speed box in as their first their first car. And I think that's a pretty cool platform because it's going to be quite cost-effective but is going to have a chassis and sort of be able to be set up to, to teach you a lot about driving and probably have a lot of fun. Um, because a rib nut kit would be absolutely t useless to him, I'm just going to overspend and send him this book on racecraft. It is called Getting Faster. Here it is here. It's about 30 to 35 bucks from memory. Uh, this book is really great in that it, it explains racecraft and vehicle handling fundamentals very easily. Uh, it's not too thick or boring and it has lots of pictures. Uh, I recommend it to everyone who's getting into performance cars and driving because it means you'll progress 20 times faster, getting way more fun out of track days and, and, and road driving as well. Uh, anyhow, I've digressed frothing on about this book. Uh, my email is going to be in the description for those guys. Please send me a pic of your car so I know you're not taking the piss. Uh, put something useful in the email subject like W penis size for 9.95 so it doesn't get lost in my junk and I'll make sure I read it. Uh, maybe put a comment in the bottom of this video as well so I know that you are going to be sending me the email. Uh, anyhow, hopefully this, this is sort of a thing that starts to be successful. Uh, we'll get stuck into the ECUs and have a chat about that. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay on the audio. Uh, I know there's been a few problems with that when I'm not directly in front of the, the microphone, but you know, it's a first world problem. Uh, as you can see, we've got the massive carbon front splitter. Uh, here's a picture of it here. I didn't have a tape measure, but you can see using the universal unit of measurement, it's about three and a half medium border collies wide. Uh, one thing that I am very conscious of with this with this piece is, is making sure that I don't destroy it too quickly. Uh, I'll be putting paint protection film over it and uh, also gluing on some nylon strips onto the leading edge. But I also want to just be conscious of carrying the underbody paint further forward than the, than the back side here where it could sit underneath this or, or the painted frame that it's on and just through natural vibration driving just start to that abrasive surface of the paint just start to wear through either the resin or, or, the, or the paint on the frame so just little things like that are always important to be to be sort of conscious of when you're building the car uh, it's it's a very bad thing to find out uh, find out later and it's gonna be stressful enough driving around with this thing not not breaking anything and not not hurting the bit of big bit of carbon so We've sealed up the stitch weld lines with the Worth Bond and Seal. One tip I like to use is uh, to get a cloth dampened with some, some wax and seal. Uh, the, the can on the left there as distinct from the whiskey on the right. Uh, don't use the whiskey, it's very expensive if you're going to use it as a solvent. And just do one final pass over this, this sealant. Um, what it does is it just uh, gives a very fine or very smooth finish to the top of the sealant. Um, that roughness is is just nice to avoid uh, you know when you're doing a bathroom when you're doing grouting or, or when you're silicon siliconing a bathroom that's that's just to avoid any spots where you can have sort of dirt and grime and moisture build up which would create mold or you know you just build up a whole heap of junk there so it seems like a good idea to follow the same rationale here uh, bully line is what I'm going to be using uh, it's the paint that makes you look like you knew what you were doing even if you're a complete idiot uh, it adds some sound deadening to the panel it looks good and provides some very good protection uh, Raptor line is a very similar product this one here is about two hundred dollars for a four liter kit with it with a gun um, I used it very well to, to sort of pretty pretty great uh, results on my series 2 Land Rover 
Uh, here's a picture of it here, if I can find one. Uh, you get good coverage, and uh, you apply a couple of coats, and, and it looks really good. So, uh, look, it's a product that I've, I've sort of bought more and more of because I, I think it's quite good. Uh, now, I guess we'll, we'll get onto the ECUs and, and start talking about that. All right, so we're just sitting here in my NAMX5. It's got a little turbo 1.8 litre motor, about 240 horsepower or something like that. Uh, I'll just switch it on here. Hopefully the 1990s analog uh, immobilizer's not killing me. Yep, no, that works. Um, look, tunability with ECUs is something that's improved relatively recently. Uh, I don't think there's the same gap that there always was. Pretty much any ECU that isn't building someone's basement is going to have adequate resolution in the tuning tables. And by that, I mean enough data points so that you can get smooth running. Um, and it'll have 4D tuning tables, boost by gear, etc., etc. That's that's all fairly standard. Uh, beyond that, the more sophisticated ones will have stuff like you know high tech launch control. This ECU do actually does have launch control, um, and it can. But the better ones can control torque and manage it based on say drive shaft speed to an individual axle against RPM. Uh, they the better ones generally have better computing power and data acquisition frequency as well. Um, you know, so there's that sort of thing. They also have more inputs and outputs and the ability to drive digital and analog external devices with, with a level of programming. Uh, if you have an electric water pump, for example, like I will in the Ultima, uh, it usually runs without a thermostat. So you have to actually cycle that on and off uh, so that you can, you know, have water moving around even just during warm up. Um, but it'll also need to have the ability to have a dead band and anticipatory ramping. Uh, better ECUs can actually do that without a separate add-on controller, etc. Uh, you can start to run into issues on more sophisticated engines in regard to the number of inputs and outputs and what you're reading as well. Uh, you also have to analyze and control based on those inputs and outputs, so, so that's another thing. Uh, if, for example, you had an O2 wideband in each exhaust runner on a V16, um, so you can control and taper fuel to match the AFR on, e AFR on each individual cylinder, you can see that before long you'd be running into trouble. Uh, that is something they do on lots of drag cars and when they're doing engine tuning because it is at that level uh, required. Um, we can see here on this this particular ECU, we've got a hard rev limit, a soft rev limit. Uh, we've also got coolant based uh, rev limiters and we've got spark retard options. You can cut spark, you can also cut fuel, uh, depending on what you want to do. Uh, this is all relatively simple and the good thing about, about any ECU is if you can get a copy of uh, if, of the software and, and it's relatively inexpensive it's not so much that you should get in here and start dicking around with things because if you have a good tuner they, they sort of know what they're doing but beyond that it just enables you to do stuff like this is a high speed uh, data logger and also gives diagnostics so I can choose whatever sensor I want to read in this left hand side here and if for example I was having an issue with the car starting I might be able to say map I don't care your crank angle sensor and you might find that it's getting a funny reading and it's going out of sync too many times, and that's why your car's not starting. On, on, MX, <coughs> on all MX-5s, actually, uh, that's actually a pretty common problem that you can run into. So if I was at the circuit, it's the first day out, and it always happens in the first session, uh, you find that the car doesn't want to start or it's going to die. I keep a spare one of those crank angle sensors in the car, and look, if it runs into any issue, I can see here immediately just by plugging in my laptop, look, it's not getting a reading. Uh, it takes me two seconds to swap it out. I can plug it in and then just go out. Uh, it, uh, alternatively, if I was getting sort of funny readings from my um, O2 sensor or, or sort of something that was more critical, I might choose to call it a day and, and save myself an engine. So I, I think having access to free software just to, just to be able to data log and, and just fix, fix things diagnostically is very important. And that's something that I always think is, is uh, worthwhile knowing if you're really going to use the car. Uh, unless you're the type of guy that has a has a whole heap of race engineers that are going to follow you around. I know there are people that can afford to do that, but but I'm not one of them. Um, so, you know, this sort of stuff is really handy and, and important to me. And I kind of like the ability to come in here and muck around with things. This car, for example, was having uh, issues with ignition ignition dropping out uh, once it got a bit of heat into it under, under boost uh, when I was running at Sydney Motorsport Park a couple of months ago. So what I did is I bought a set of LS1 coils and, and put it into the car. And what I need to do then is apart from updating the settings in here, which you know would have cost me money to go to a tuner, I just updated them in, in, in this myself. 
I uh, added about 5% more fuel into the into the VE table. And then what I did is I went out and data log just to make sure that we were still meeting AFR targets uh, ba based on those settings. There was a little bit of fine tuning here and there, but that, that's that's relatively simple stuff that doesn't require a whole heap of brain power uh, that, that was really nice to be able to do just yourself. Safeties. I know we've talked about limiting RPM based on you know cold cold starts, uh, standard rev limit stuff like fuel cut and ignition cut, warning lights and outputs, uh, multi input knock sensing. Uh, the better ones, and part of the reason why I really like the Haltech Nexus or this Emtron stuff, apart from it being Australian made and being a bit patriotic there. Uh, you can actually taper the fuel table to cool the engine as you approach oil and water temperature thresholds. So uh, what you're doing is you are tipping in more fuel into the motor as it starts to get hot. Uh, the actual AFR ratio makes a huge difference to how hot your engine's running. So, so it's sort of like a proactive measure in terms of getting some cooling in there. Um, you can also pull timing, which will ultimately help that as well. Uh, you do sacrifice a bit of horsepower, but but it should keep things keep things uh, you know in check, especially if you are pushing the car and it's sort of a fairly unusual circumstance or a temporary uh, a temporarily hot uh, session or whatever. Um, closing of the throttle body as you approach the rev limit is something that I absolutely love that the better ECUs run. Uh, simply cutting spark or fuel makes the engine run relatively roughly and you're doing this at the operational limit of the motor when everything is at maximum stress. So it simply can't be good for wear or shock loading of components. I don't think it, it requires you know, a rocket scientist to work that out. Uh, what these ECUs do is start to close the throttle a few hundred RPM before you hit the limiter, thereby softening the impact of it. Uh, you know that in conjunction with with pulling some timing uh, is something that that is absolutely I think sort of great uh, when when you're starting to push cars cars really hard. Uh, support wise, make sure that you have uh, your tuner. You know when you select him, he needs to be good at what he's doing, but he also needs to have support from the people who he is purchasing purchasing the gear from. Uh, even if your tuner is great, they might not be available in the future and you don't want the ECU company they rely on to, to sort of, you know, have an excuse for, for not being able to help out. Uh, if you're going to just use the tuner that is, you know, use the ECU that the tuner is recommended, then you need to be, make sure that he's capably answered a, a, a few questions that are, that are maybe a few curveballs. Uh, you know, uh... They could easily be a bullshit artist, and you're talking about a lot of hard-earned dollars potentially that, that you're putting into your project, and and you don't want to be finding out that all of a sudden that he made a whole heap of promises. Um, you know, there are people that uh, that, that are going to be learning, and, and they're you know tuners do do develop over time, but you don't want them to be experimenting on your project. So I think the dragonfly up there is making a bit of noise. So hopefully that's not getting through on the audio. Uh, cost. At the cheaper end of the range, you're going to find things like the Haltech Elite 1500, the Motorsport Electronic stuff, Adaptronic, uh, or Mega Squirt, which, even though it sounds like a dodgy porno, is is actually a pretty good ECU. Uh, the latter of which is really great if you want to learn how to tune yourself. Um, there's some great online courses that you can do now, stuff like you know HBA Horsepower Academy Run. Um, I completed uh, one of their courses, and and it was sort of good. You know, I've got a reasonably good theoretical knowledge, uh, I think, but uh, being able to put that into practice and, and do it on a, a car that is, you know, potentially pretty, pretty, uh, what do you say, um, nice to do it on, like MX-5s aren't notorious for blowing up or anything like that, they're quite an understressed, uh, understressed thing. Um, if you are doing it, uh, you know, make sure that you are doing it with with adequate sort of uh, guidance or, or do it on something that's, that's really nice like that. Um, you know, MX-5s are even a non-interference engine, so it, you can completely cook a timing belt. Uh, you can screw the timing completely and you're still not going to put valves through a head. You have to kind of be a bit of a dick to destroy one. Um, that That's sort of a good place to start. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a bit of a Renault fan. fan. I've had uh, Renault Clio Sports and, and I've got a Megane at the moment that we're running or my missus drives. Um, it, it's, it's a great fun car and they're certainly pretty reliable for track days and stuff like that, but they're, they're infinitely more uh, more difficult to work on and also you need to be more conscious of your, of your mistakes in that sense. <clears throat> At the upper end of the spectrum, you've got full fruit offerings like the Motec M1 series, uh, Bosch Motorsports stuff, uh, Haltech Nexus and, and these Mtron units. 
Uh, you can expect to pay about three to five K for these, and some of them are designed in conjunction with PDMs or, or power distribution modules, which are a pretty cool bit of gear. Uh, you basically just need to find an ECU that's, that's uh, in keeping with your budget and suitable to your application. Uh, if you're running a $30,000 engine and or one that's you know relatively highly strung, uh, you need to be controlling it and protecting it with something that has a level of sophistication that's in keeping with that. Uh, make sure when you compare ECUs, though, make sure you are comparing apples and apples. Um, the Mtron, for example, I've got includes dual on band, uh, dual on board wide band controllers, whereas the Mega Squirt that I showed earlier in the in the video, uh, you have to buy external controllers for. So I'd need to add those controllers onto the cost of the ECU to to be looking at them on this on a level playing field. Um, some other factors and considerations: the actual build quality. Uh, you know, is the case IP rated, for example? I really like that this ECU is in fact in a billet aluminium case. So when I mount it, it's, apart from going to be look nice, it's going to be well protected. So if you're putting this in an engine bay, for example, or say you're doing an off-road uh, buggy or something like that, that would be something that you really need to look at. The actual electrical connectors themselves and how reliable they are and the quality of that connection is really important. Uh, if you like me and you're not an electrical wizard, chasing electrical issues is like, the biggest devil on any project car because you can spend hours and hours and potentially just go down a path like you know Alice in Wonderland finding thinking that you've got one issue that's actually caused by another issue that's actually caused by another issue and then you end up finding out that it was the most simple thing in the world um, is is just something you you just want to avoid at all times um, I, I'm not the best at wiring I'm, I'm actually doing a, an online wiring course now for, for automotive applications just to make sure that I'm using the best connectors and the best gear I am not going to be building my own wiring loom for the Ultima I think the factory loom is sort of a tried and tested method uh, yes it does use a standard fuse and relay type setup but it's it's at least a known quantity um, I will build the engine side loom just so I can run stuff like drive-by-wire throttle uh, for the aforementioned uh, ability to shut the throttle bodies before they before they you know you hit the rev limiter um, there's also some other things that are really good in that sense uh, keeping in mind that if you actually have a really badly tuned drive-by-wire system it's absolutely shit house uh, so so you know you need to make sure that you, you whoever's tuning your car has a really good appreciation for that um, power distribution modules are something that uh, basically is a solid state and programmable version of a relay and fuse setup that is uh, a pretty amazing bit of gear in the sense that it will enable you to uh, say you have a, an over voltage or, or over current situation which is going to mean that you're going to you know potentially you know kill the motor or something like that you can then look back at that pdm look at what circumstance occurred to drive that um, you can reset it without having to go and physically change a component uh, and you can also uh, you know put some programming in there to to stop it from happening again or or even say you're running too close to it, like your expe expected uh, current draw on a uh, I don't care water pump electric AC whatever like that happened to be 10 amps and it's only 10.1 typically all right great you can just bump the the uh, overcurrent protection by half an amp it's not going to burn out your wiring because you know that you've got some some fat in that and, and move on with life uh, sensors the ECU is only as good as the data it can read if you like anything in life shit in equals shit out uh, if you put the right information in and it's high quality you are going to get you're going to at least give the ECU the ability to, to make the right decisions. Uh, obviously, I choose, I chose Bosch stuff. It, it's pretty much the best you can get. Uh, they also do a lot of OEM things. Um, there are some useful ones where they will actually combine stuff. So this one here from Bosch is actually a combined temperature and pressure sensor. So I can put this in my oil system, for example. It is a single point connection, which means that I don't have two sensors plugged in which is two points that can leak or two points that fail or two sensors that can fail it's just the one point uh, it reads both of it at the same point the same same time and i think this is this is actually a really good good bit of gear in that sense uh the only other thing which is probably worth noting is dual fuel tables and blending e85 is basically free horsepower and free engine cooling uh it, it's at the cost of a little bit of maintenance but apart from that it's a really great really great fuel um, I don't run E85 but lots of that just has to do with the fact that it's just not available where I am and I don't want the added maintenance uh, in the town that I'm in we've got two service stations that have E85 and they're at opposite ends of the earth 
So I built my motor and I made the choices for, for my cars around 98 RON or 98 rated octane number in Australia. Uh, I don't think that's the same in the US. I think it's like you might have 91 or something like that. It's, it's sort of the best you can get uh, that's not made out of corn from your, from your local service station. Anyway, look, that isn't a comprehensive, uh, comprehensive description of what you need to look at with ECUs, but hopefully it gives you an idea of, of the thought paths that you, the, that you need to sort of adopt uh, when you are choosing your ECU and, and some of the questions that you can sort of lob on your tuner to make sure that he's not a bullshit artist and, and make sure that he's at least, uh, you know, the type of guy that you're going to be able to rely on is going to deliver you exactly what you want. Um, anyhow, look, I do have, uh, a, a, what do you call it, a um, Instagram. If I'm on Instagram, I assume everyone else is on Instagram. Uh, uh, it's 105 Motorsport if you guys want to follow along there. I tend to just post up a few videos in, in a bit more real time uh, as I sort of progress. Uh, keep posting your comments on, on, on your cars and, and your projects below the, below the videos. And each week I, I will be trying to send out, send out some tools um, that will hopefully help people finish their builds. Anyhow, thanks for watching again. Um, I hope, hope the following keeps, gro keeps growing and, and I've been enjoying actually the process of building and documenting it. So, so I'll keep doing it for now and until it uh, causes too much of a pain. If there's any questions about ECUs or even any helpful comments that you can make to, to other other watchers, please, please by all means put it down below. Uh, I'm not going to take it as criticism. I'm happy for a bit of open deba debate and, and you know I might even learn a few things myself. Uh, I noticed that there was someone who'd, who'd made a correction on one of my videos a couple of times ago and, and I always pinned that as the first comment. Um, just so other people could see it. It was a relatively minor one. It actually took someone uh, three weeks to, to pick it up, but uh, it, it was useful nonetheless. Anyhow, until next until next time, uh, I did get word through just recently, uh, having shot this as the last section of these videos, that my motor has been dynoed. It's made the numbers that I was expecting and I'm really happy with, and it, it, it sounds pretty good, so hopefully that'll get delivered in the next couple of days, and, and I'll do a bit of a rundown on that, and, and we can talk about, talk about where we're at and, and go from there. Anyhow, thanks for watching.